presence of God to worship you, Lord. Father God, we are committing ourselves to the mighty hand of God. And Lord, as we are going to listen to the word of God, Father, we pray that help us to understand the clear meaning of the word of God. Help us to love you, Lord. Help us to come closer unto the, unto the presence of God. And help us to close that intimacy with Jesus in our lives, O Lord. This morning, speak to us, O God. Thank you for hearing your prayer, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. So, prayerfully, let us uh, sit in the presence of God. And uh, we know that uh, as we are celebrating the Father's Day today, um, I would like to uh, talk on a topic which is closely uh, related to that celebration. And uh, unfortunately, um, only few fathers are present here. Uh, many of our, many of our I mean, fathers from our church, they are in India and they are traveling, so we will uh, pray for them. Anyway, thank God for uh, 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 all the dads, those who are presented here, and uh, uh, I pray that uh, may, may God bless you. And uh, we'll be praying for all the uh, brothers, uh, the, the, the brothers, those who are, and the, and the, and the families, those who are uh, uh, trying and those who are uh, looking forward to become a father. And, uh, and I believe that, I mean, we will be uh, celebrating the Father's Day of some of our brothers here in the, in, the, in the coming years. Amen. So let's pray for that. You know, they are praying for that uh, in the presence of God. And we have to pray for all the families, those who are praying uh, for a blessing of a child. Okay. So the people, those who are praying, the families, those who are praying for a blessing of a child. Okay. So let us pray for them also. So I remember while I was uh, uh, preaching on Mother's Day uh, last month. When was Mother's Day last month? Hmm? May? 8th? Or 9th? May 8th. Okay. So you remember that. At least the father should remember that. <laughs> yeah. So I just remember that, you know, when I was uh, preaching for that Mother's Day last month. Um, I asked a question. Do you remember that question? When I was starting the message, I asked a question to the mothers and to all. Hmm? What is that? Hmm. Yeah, the question was, can we consider our Heavenly Father as a mother. Can we consider our Heavenly Father as a mother? What was the answer? Hmm? You said yes. And I also said yes. Because of many reasons. And I was uh, singing few songs in different languages. You remember that? The Telugu song, the Telugu people here, families, you remember that? What is that? Amma na 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 means daddy. Okay, in Telugu. So I was singing that song, Amma na na, then Malalam song. Appanum ammayam vedum, dhanangalum vastu sukhangalum kartavatri. Remember that song? And the, and 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 Tamil, Tamil song. Uru thai te truva dai pol yenne sir te truva dani. You have any Kannada song related to that? Dani knows Kannada, no? Very very well. And uh, even Dr. Maladi also speaks Kannada. So I don't remember any songs now about the about the about the I mean God as a as a mother. Okay, anyway, we'll come to the point, you know. So I was just thinking about eh? Appa, Appa, Yes, Appa, there is no mother in. Kannada song, but Appa, Appa, Yes, Appa for, for, for Father's Day. <laughs> okay, you can sing that song today. Appa, Appa, Yes, Appa, Nane Nina Sarvaswa, Nane Nina No, Bittu Yenu, Madalara No. Okay, so, you know, the songs are like that. And when we study from the Bible, we understand a God, our Father God in heaven is a mother for every one of us 
in many reasons in many reasons amen so we have been discussing about all those things and if i ask you today that can be consider our god father as a father i know that there is no conclusion you know, there is no confusion for that right no we can we can call our god in heaven as a father because there are many songs not only songs there are many bible verses that which proves that our god in heaven is a great father and that's the that's the prayer that we are we are starting the prayer that uh, jesus was teaching to the disciples what is the prayer our father in heaven so we should start our prayer with what not with lord jesus but start with our father in heaven so this is the this is the this is the message and that is the prayer that's the model of the prayer that jesus was teaching to the disciples starting with our father in heaven then we are closing our prayer with in jesus name we pray our father in heaven and in jesus name we pray amen so today i would like to talk about man our father god father and our sonship in heaven okay god father and our sonship in heaven so listen very carefully into this message this morning so that uh, i mean we will be emphasizing and we will be focusing on our god as a father of many nations and of a father of the children of god the father of the children of god men so uh let me tell you one thing you can see the words like uh, the fatherhood or fathership and also the sonship in the bible but the question is no daughtership in the bible is there anything sonship is there fathership is there or fatherhood is there but there is no daughtership in the bible you know that the word the word daughtership so can we use that uh, daughtership the word daughtership in english in secular i don't know about that is there a, is there a word like uh, daughtership no no i don't think so okay yeah huh? <laughs> in america everything is possible <laughs> he can say anything right okay anyway okay you, you just call it but but there is no uh, uh, daughtership the word daughtership in the bible okay but the question is why god or the holy spirit is not mentioning about the daughtership in the bible sonship is there putratvam unde putratvam unde pinna nunde pidrutvam unde pashe endilla putritvam illa undo putritvam nu orde vaakku undo i was just thinking about that you know we call that ourselves are okay god is calling us that as sons of god or children of god or like that hmm? and i was just thinking why god is not mentioning about the putritvam or the daughtership in the bible there are some reasons for that you know i believe that everyone those who are sitting here whether i mean women or men or ladies or gents or i mean daughters or um uh, sons whoever it may be if you are a born again believer you are a child of god you are a child of god and there is no meaning in calling a daughtership but i think commonly it is said that sonship 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 in bible everywhere okay the sonship so uh, don't worry uh, don't worry the, the the ladies or the or the daughters you are also inv- included that okay so god is not excluding you but you are also included in that that you know uh, the according to the biblical um, uh, understanding we can say that men always uh, i mean the righteous are using uh, the children of god okay the children of god the child of god both the both the genders are included in that okay the the boys and the girls and the daughters and the boys okay the the sons all are included in that that means you know we all are one in christ okay we all are one in christ and we all are together worshiping god okay? so there is no difference in that at the same time we believe that our god father in heaven is the father of every child of god hallelujah even maria mandi is sitting here he she may be the oldest one in our church today okay but you are a daughter of god and 
you are a daughter of god i think you are in uh, 72 or something 70 75 see mariam and is 75 and anamma is 74 i think 72 74 see so even though they are in their 75 or 74 or something no they are the daughter of god we have a father god in heaven and they are the daughter of god and i am the child of god I mean every person those who were born again and they are the children of god now let's read maybe second corinthians i'll be uh, next slide second corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 and that could be the the main um i mean uh, main text of our message today yeah Amen. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters says the Lord almighty. Amen. So um you can you can uh, uh, see that particular I mean word there and you will understand that uh, I mean God says that I will be the father to you and you will be my sons and daughters says the lord almighty so there are many places uh, i mean god is saying in the bible that you are my daughters okay take down these points okay take down these points it, it will be very easy for you to understand maybe if you are thinking about that later okay so you you will be getting many points from there and you can think about that later okay so listen you know uh, and, and again in 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 revelation chapter 21 verse 7 we read that He who overcomes shall inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son. Instead of my son, you can add he will be my child or he will be my daughter. Okay, the daughter is of a church. You can say that he will be my daughter. That means now he who overcomes shall inherit all these things. and i will be his god and he will be my son that means you know in heaven in heaven after overcoming all the problems of this world and all the i mean sinful natures and sinful pleasures of this world we will be in heaven once right one day we will be in heaven and there when we raise to heaven you will see the father god okay we believe in trinity father god son jesus christ and the holy spirit and we are going to see that trinity together in heaven in heaven hallelujah so now also we are experiencing the spiritual experience of the heavenly father son jesus christ and the holy spirit but we are going to see face to face that trinity in heaven hallelujah that's the reason that it says that i mean he who overcomes that means we are the people those who are supposed to overcome all the worldly pleasures and all the worldly problems and let's overcome everything i mean overcome the satanic attacks and overcome i mean uh, the the worldly pleasures and overcome the influences of the sin hallelujah praise the lord we have to overcome everything that which is hindering in our spiritual life amen so when we overcome the hindrances hallelujah when we overcome the satanic attacks when we overcome the influence of the sin of this world when we overcome the influence of satan in our lives amen at the second coming of jesus christ we will be transformed hallelujah our body will be transformed and we will be taken into heaven with god hallelujah and we will be there that means in heaven god will be a father and we will be his sons okay his sons and also the question is how we can become how we can become sons and daughters of god or how god become our heavenly father now as we are celebrating the father's day today we are talking about god the father in heaven So the question is how we become sons and daughters of God and how God become our heavenly father the answer is there already what is the answer it's very clear and it's very simple okay it's a simple message you will we'll go go in this way itself okay so what is that answer it is possible it is possible through a spiritual process of adoption a spiritual process of adoption so that is the reason that we are calling our god as a father 
and we are called as the sons and daughters of father god or you can call it as a fa- i mean of uh, sons and daughters of jesus also and we are the friends of jesus and we are the we are the co brothers okay uh, of jesus christ when so we have that privilege and we have that position in our lives through jesus christ okay so that's the reason that how god became our heavenly father it's only because of the of the um, or through the spiritual process of adoption adoption and we will go to galatians chapter uh, uh, chapter 4 verses 4 to 6 okay so when a person is reading that portion i mean everybody you everybody everybody of you can uh, listen to that verse i mean uh, uh, i mean and uh, you will understand the meaning of that verse okay uh, galatian chapter um 4 verses 4 to 6 yeah let us let's think about something when I mean, how we became the children of god okay and how i mean the the the, the process of adoption is happening how the process of adoption is happening and and but and what god did for the children of god to become the children of god or the sons of god and daughters of god okay okay when the time had fully come god sent his son from the father and he was born of a virgin and he Amen. So listen, you know what is adoption and how we are adopted into the family of God and how our heavenly God became the heavenly father for the people of God for the children of God. You know, when we think about the history of the the people those who were living in that country, the adoption was a common practice among the Roman world who was not having a son in their family. Okay. So the adoption was a common practice in the roman world when a father is not having or the parents are not having a son in their family but it was not a common thing common practice for the jewish people it was not the common thing for the jewish people but it was very common for the roman world to 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 adopt a son if they are not having a son because when uh, those parents had to give uh, the, the 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 positions and the possessions and also the privileges and the and the and the authority of that family and all the uh, all the things that which uh, that belongs to that family uh, should be uh, handed over to the to the to the next generation by a son so if they don't have a son they used to uh, i mean uh, they used to adopt a son from somewhere else okay so that was the system that the roman world was i mean Uh, i mean uh, doing and even like, for example uh, you can think about moses you know moses was adopted as a son of pharaoh's daughter right moses was adopted as a son of pharaoh's daughter yeah pharaoh's daughter putriyude maganaayittaan aare therinjeduthade moses ne therinjeduthade alle so you know that adoption you know we cannot say that okay, it was it was a legal process in those days when uh, um, i mean uh, somebody was taking somebody was adopting a son from other family you know we cannot say that in those days but later it became a practice it became a legal process to take a, you know there are many process to take a, take as an even today also if you want to adopt a son okay you will have to go through many uh, legal process okay so uh, uh, that's it okay anyway you know in acts chapter 7 verse 21 in acts chapter t- i mean uh, 7 verse 21 we read clearly that and when he was exposed when he was exposed pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son so, okay in in some other translation it is when uh, the the pharaoh's daughter I mean, took him that's it but the real translation is the pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son okay so this adoption is a process when a son is coming to a new family and that son is going to get many things from that family okay many many facilities and many many blessings and uh, many many i mean positions and possessions are going to be handed over to that son when that son is i mean joining into the into the family as a son of that uh, i mean family that means you know bosses uh, bosses god all the freedom in the palace Okay. in the egyptian palace moses got all the freedom and he got all the facilities facilities and he was supposed to be the next king in egypt okay moses was supposed to be the next king in egypt 
and he became the heir of the royalty that means he was supposed to to be a king in egypt when later but he could not do that because you know he just left the palace I mean, because of some other reasons okay so the, the the thing is you know when a person when a son is adopted to a family you know he is worthy of uh, i mean calling as uh, i mean holding all the positions of that that that, that family and father is belong the, the, the father of the family is belongs to the son even though he was not the i mean member of this family even though he I mean, the fa that father was not the father of this son but after the adoption he becomes the main person in the family and he says that this is my father this is my father new father and i am the son of that father through the adoption that's the reason in christianity in i mean in in our i mean what is that um, uh, in spirituality we read in ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 read, In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is that word? In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. So our adoption happened only through Jesus Christ. Okay. It was not directly, I mean, God was I mean, adopting every one of us as his daughters and sons of God, the Father. But God was sending his son, Jesus Christ, in this world. And through Jesus Christ, we became the sons and daughters of God, the Father, in heaven. Amen. So we got the sonship through Jesus Christ. Amen. We are not children of God by birth. No? We are not the children of God by birth. So we, when we were born... We were not the children of God, but we were having another father. Who was that? In our, in our birth, we were having another, another father. Huh? Who? The natural father is there, but spiritually talking. Satan was the father of everyone, those who are born into this world. Okay? That means we are born into this world as a sinner. Right? As a sinner, we are born into this world. Then after receiving Jesus Christ and after the born again experience, we became the children of God, right? I mean, so we were under the, the, the control of Satan and we were under the control. You know, when I was, I mean, I was I mean, uh, I mean, thinking about this, I mean, uh, some of the I mean, people are I mean, uh, questioning about that and they are saying, you know, if, if, a, if, a, if a baby is born into a, into a Christian family, I mean, uh, can you can you call him as a child of God? That's right. You know, uh, you know. When I'm asking this question, there there will be confusion about that. You know, I know that. You know, uh, sometimes you know uh, we cannot say that okay, you are a, you are a, you are a son of Satan. We will not call him as a son of Satan. But 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 okay. So the point is, you know. When we call the master, say, hey, you are the son of Satan or you are the son or daughter of Satan. We cannot call that. At the same time, technically, this is happening. You know, when a person is born into this world, he is born into the sinful nature. Okay, so till the time when he is accepting Jesus and when he is having that recognition of that Lord Jesus is my savior. Okay, till that time, he is controlled by the Satan and he, he or he she or is controlled by the influences of this world but when she or he is coming to Christ and accepting Jesus as his or her I mean, personal savior then that person is becoming a child of God then we say that how to be saved how to be saved huh? accept Jesus as your personal savior and confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus is my Lord and Savior. So from that moment, we became, we became the children of God. And from that moment, God is our Lord and Savior. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Okay, so we will, I mean, uh, move on I mean, with that point. You know, today, we have an identity. Today, we have an identity. And it's a privilege also that our father's name is changed and got a new father, the heavenly father and the heavenly citizenship. Hallelujah. How many of you are happy about that? 
Amen. We have a new father today. Before our conversion or before coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we were having another father. The satanic control was there. But now we became the children of God and we have a new father and we got a sonship here today and we have the citizen of heaven. I mean, if we believe that, how many are so happy about the citizenship of heaven? So many, there are many people, I mean, uh, trying for the citizenship of uh, U.S. And uh, I mean, there are many people getting, I mean, getting the green card and they are waiting for the citizenship. And we are the people for that. You know, we are, we are waiting for the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, citizenship and we have the green card now. And there are many people also waiting for the citizenship. And it's, when, when we think about that, it's a great thing that we are receiving the citizenship of Yes. Okay. And how much more? It is great. It is great that we are the citizen of heaven. Don't worry if you don't have a citizen of yes. Okay. You have the citizen in heaven. Okay. You have the citizenship in heaven. Hallelujah. And uh, when we think about that, and this is actually the thing is happening when we become the sons and daughters of God. We are getting the citizenship in our hands. We are getting the citizenship in our hands. And we are going to I mean, think about I mean, the stages of sonship. Okay. And we say that we are the children of God. Amen. And we are the sons of God. We are the daughters of God. Okay. So what are the stages of the sonship? How can you become a perfect son of God? How can you become a perfect daughter of God? Even till we reach to heaven. When, so the, the thing is, you know, the sonship is a process of progressive maturity. Okay, the sonship is a process of progressive maturity. That means every day we have the progressive maturity. You know, when we were born and when we when we were I mean, born again, I mean, it was a situation that the infancy situation, okay, and just like a child, we were acting and just like, a, I mean, a person, a child who is knowing anything about the, the Bible or something. But after that, we are growing. Okay, so the spiritual growth is happening day by day. The spiritual growth is happening day by day. And the spiritual maturity that we are getting, I mean, through reading Bible, listening the word of God, singing songs and uh, worshipping together and having the fellowship together, we are receiving the spiritual maturity day by day. I mean, so when we think about the sonship, there are many stages for the sonship. Okay, you are not, you are the son of God now, you are the child of God now when you accept Jesus as your personal savior. But there should be a spiritual growth of maturity every day of our lives. I mean, when you think about the Greek language, and you can see that, I mean, and there are mainly five Greek terms used for the, for the, uh, to indicate the different stages of sonship. Okay? To indicate the different stages of sonship, you can see five Greek words. Okay? So, I'll be pronouncing these Greek words, and I don't know, is it uh, the proper pronunciation? But it's a Greek language and uh, I, I knew Greek language before when I was studying in the Bible college. Uh, but I, I can't uh, uh, use those seven Greek words now. I was, I was able to read the Greek uh, Bible also in those days. But after I could not practice that, I am not able to read the Bible now. But I, I, I can understand the words which is, in, which is written in, in, in Greek. But this is, uh, this is in English. Okay. This is very easy to understand. And uh, the pronunciation made different. Okay. And how many of you can read a Greek? How many of you read Greek? Greek language? Lift your hands. Ah, I'm going to show you. Okay. Eh? So if I mistake, make a mistake in, in reading that or pronunciation. So no problem. Okay. You don't know the Greek. Okay, come to the point. You know, you know. Um, um, uh, what is that? The, the, the first Greek word, hmm? nephios. Okay. Nephios is the first Greek word, which is used for uh, uh, the sonship, the stages of sonship, and that is in Galatians chapter four, verse one. Read that verse. I mean, I mean, uh, quickly. Galatians chapter four, verse uh, one. Okay, nephios is a stage of a of a person. Nephios is a stage of a I mean, person who is uh, going to the sonship. Okay, read that verse. Four one. Thank you, Jason. Okay, what is that? The stage of infancy. 
this is the stage of infancy that means seeking always for the milk not the solid food that means you know a born again person becomes a son of god and becomes the heir in the house of god and he is not a slave but the owner of everything in house of god okay when a person is coming to the sonship the first stage is in the infancy is in the infancy what happens in the hebrews chapter uh, um, uh, hebrews chapter 5 verses 13 and 14 you will see that the infant is always looking for what milk right always the infant is looking for milk you know the, the, the solid food is not digesting for a for an infant okay for an infant so that is the first stage of a sonship of a person and this is the greek word nephios is the greek word which is used for the first stage of the sonship men so again in the second stage the second stage is when paedian the paedian is the second stage of a sonship that is in i mean first john chapter 2 verse 13 read that verse also first john chapter 2 verse 13 Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, thank you. So, the Padian is a child who is able to recognize his father. Listen, you know, this is the second stage of a sonship. And in this stage, the child will be able to understand who is his father. Okay? There are many people after getting into Christ and the people, those who are I mean, born again, you know, in their spiritual maturity, every day they are growing. Every day they are growing. Okay? And once they were infant, Okay, and the second stage is this one, the Padian, and the Padian stage is the second one. In that stage, what is happening? He can recognize his father, and he will try to call Abba, Appa, eh? or uh, Daddy, or Papa, okay, uh, Appacha. Okay, so we are calling that word in this second stage. Okay, this is the maturity. This is the progressive maturity of a, I mean, person, a spiritual person or a Christian person. Okay, and the third, uh, um, I mean, word the Greek, in Greek which is used is technon. Technon is the third, I mean, word in Greek which is used for the the stages of the of the of the sonship. Okay, that is in Matthew chapter twenty one verses twenty eight through 31 okay so we have no time to read all those portions but we will i will tell you when what is there i mean in that portion so from matthew chapter 21 verses 28 through 31 you will say that this is the much word stage okay this is the much word stage okay and the, the the responsibilities are given to that child some of the responsibilities of the family is given to that child okay when a child is a, 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 is an infant okay newborn baby you know the parents will not give any responsibility to the baby right mm, you all are here i'll come there you all are here no you have gone somewhere hello if you are there lift your hands just hey, someone someone is not here they are not lifting their hands say hallelujah sleeping see jewel is live here you know she she just came yesterday from india she is not sleeping so you are not supposed to sleep here okay i mean lift your hands and say praise the lord praise the lord say this word say this word i'm teaching you greek now what is that check now on what is the second stage second word Pedium. and the first word Nephews. Okay, so three words. Okay, when we come to this point in Matthew chapter 21 verses 28 through 31, you can see that, you know, for a child who is little matured, we are giving some responsibility. Okay, so you know that the parents are sitting here, eh? fathers and mothers are sitting here, you are giving some of the responsibility to your, your children like this, no? Right? You know, when they, when they, when they are growing up, Okay, so you're giving some responsibility. What is the responsibility you are given to um, Nathan? Sumant? In, 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 in home. Cleaning the house. See, 
that is a responsibility cleaning the house you know if you ask the, some other parents you will say that, okay i mean i am giving the responsibility of making the bed then taking up the garbage then cleaning the feeding the dog <laughs> shower daily then you know some of our daughters are preparing for cooking right you know the parents the mothers are I mean, training them for how to cook the indian food how to cook the indian food sambar chore and more eh? and what is that eh? milk variety or all, all those things okay so you know some of the you know <laughs> yeah chicken curry or mutton curry or beef curry you know ellarum vaayinu vellam varunu ippo thanne yeah okay come back you know the, the thing is you know when they are growing and when they are i mean i mean getting maturity in their lives I and mean, the parents are giving some of the responsibility to your children okay that is the stage 3 the technon is the son, the stage of the sonship okay in this particular verse we read about a parable of one father and two sons okay one father and two sons and father gives some responsibility to them and that was the i mean the work to work in vineyard okay the father is giving the responsibility of working in the vineyard to these two sons and they were matured enough to take the responsibility but they had the freedom to decide accordingly okay when you go to verse um, 29 and 30 you will read that and he answered uh, the son the first son okay what is the responsibility given to the first son there okay and uh, and he answered i will not but afterward he re regretted it and he went the first son okay he the father gave a responsibility that you of a son come here and you go to the vineyard and work there okay go there and work okay and i mean when he was asked to work there in the vineyard this the first son said i will not he said no i will not go first of all he said first of all he said i will not go but we read there but afterward he regretted it and went so when a responsibility was given to the first son you think about how he is responding to that how he is reacting that okay and first of all he said no no i will not go to work then uh, uh, some of our children also they do like that no sometimes okay you know when parents are saying okay, hey hey money do this okay and they will say first of all they will, no i will not do you have this experiences in your houses right the first of all they said I, i cannot do that i will not go there but after that regretting about that and saying no no i'll do i'll do i'll do okay but the second son second son in uh, in uh, verse 30 the man came to the second son and said the same thing and he answered i will sir he is telling to your, to his father i will sir but he did not go there think about the difference no the second son came the father said hey my second son come here you go to the vineyard and work there work there I man i'll give you something then all of a sudden he said i'm ready sir i'm ready father but he did not go there who is the good good son the first one is the good one your 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 your, your right andy now the first one is good one you know first of all he was not understanding what is the meaning of working in the vineyard and he said no no i cannot go then again he regretted and he said okay i am ready and i am going now and he did it okay so the thing is you know when the responsibilities are given to the stage the, the sons those who are in the stage of technon in the technon you know those children those sons are getting the responsibility and they are reacting different way they are responding to the to the responsibilities in a different way is it is it too hard to understand no no it is very easy the, the words are diff different but you will understand all these things okay so in this situation what is happening you know they are supposed to do something and they are supposed to get the responsibility but it is their freedom to do or not okay so this is a stage that the people are struggling sometimes okay in the spirituality also every sunday the people of god they are listening the word of god 
Amen. And they know that they are the born again people and they are worshipping God and they know that, okay, I am the member of the eternal church of God, but they do not understand when, when the pastor or the elders or the or the other responsible people are saying something to them and they are not I mean, ready to obey that. We do not know what is the reason. Okay, when the responsible people are saying something to the people of God, to the members of the church, amen, so when they are neglecting that when they are neglecting that and they when no the, the elders or the or the or the pastor or the responsible people are i mean saying to you to do something i mean according to the bible only no uh, i mean nothing they will say against the against the word of god right okay so when they see something to the these kind of people these stage people when I mean, some people say okay i will I, I will do that some people say i cannot do that that's what pastor what are you going to do if i'm not doing that Okay, so these kinds of mentalities are there in, in some other people. Okay, but at the same time, we have to think about how I am responding to the responsibilities which is given to me by my God. Okay, how am I responding to the responsibilities which is given to me? And you, you have the freedom to take a decision accordingly. I mean, but you are accountable with God. You are accountable with God. We will go to the fourth Greek word which is used for the stage of the I mean of the I'll be I mean I mean going little fast now and uh, I mean just come with me I mean through those points I mean the the, the, the fourth Greek word which is used in uh, Greek Bible is uh, from first John chapter 2 verses 13 to 15 there you can read in Greek Bible I mean uh, uh, Nianis cause. Nianis cause is the fourth, I mean, word, a Greek word which is used for the sonship, the stage of the sonship. And what is that stage? We already read that one, no? First John chapter 2, verses 13 and 15. Yeah, yeah, okay. So come to that point. You know, the maturity of a young man. Okay? This is the this is the stage, a maturity of the young man. That means the young man, it says that you are strong and you have the word abides in you. And you are overcoming the evil. This is the fourth stage. Okay, the people, the children, those who are in this stage, in this stage. Okay, Niyaris cause. In that stage, those people are very strong. Those people are very strong. And Bible says that. Okay, it's there in the in the in that verse. Okay, but I think verse uh, verse fifteen, first John chapter two, verse fifteen. Okay, so that says that young man, you are strong now. He is strong now, listening to the word of God and worshipping God, always having the fellowship together with the people of God. Now you are strong. And you have the word of God in you. The word of God is abiding in you. And also, you are trying to overcome the evil of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, I know that there are many people in this spiritual stage, they are trying to overcome the worldly pleasures and overcome the evil things of this world. Hallelujah. I mean, believe that you are strong. I mean, you are strong. You can make it. You can make it. You are strong. And you will be, I mean, knowing that the word of God is abiding in you. And you will overcome all those things. Hallelujah. And the fifth, I mean, Greek word is huios. Huios is the fifth Greek word which is in Matthew chapter 21 verse 38. Just read that verse itself. Okay. Matthew chapter 21 verse 38. Matthew 21, 38. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When the tenants saw the sun. Okay. Uh, uh, mm. Okay, that's enough. Okay. In Matthew chapter 21, verses 30, 33 to 41, Jesus is telling about a parable of landowner and vineyard and or, or, or you can say when I mean, wine growers or workers in the vineyard okay first I mean, to the first person he he sends him uh, uh, the slaves okay slaves to receive his produce okay the the landowner is sending um, his slaves to receive the produce but what happened was I mean the wine growers killed that person killed the slave okay the second then the landowner is sending another group of slaves but again those, I mean, uh, I mean, wine growers, they, I mean, killed those large number of, I mean, another group of slaves. Then after that, the landowner decided to send his own son. Okay, it's there in that portion. He is sending his own son. 
that we read in uh, 30 38 okay in verse 38 but when the wine growers saw the sun they said among themselves this is the hair come let us kill, kill him and seize his inheritance they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him listen this is the son this is the real son that he was obedient to the father the real son who was obedient to the father hallelujah and we can call him as the son of fully matured and christ-like son and this son is the representative of the father when the landowner sending slaves to that place but they killed him and again he is sending his own son his own son when you can see the father god here when father god is sending his own son the only begotten son into this world hallelujah we know that i mean our jesus christ was died jesus christ was crucified on the cross of calvary i mean that we can see the the, the, the love of father god the love of father god there and we got the chance and privilege to become the children of god hallelujah so let us i mean know that we are the representative of the father god in this world and we must be matured enough to do the will of father and he was the obedient to his father and this is the final stage of the of the sonship okay so these are the stages when a person is coming to Christ and he is I mean, growing day by day hallelujah let's think about our father God in heaven hallelujah and our father God in heaven has sent his own begotten son into this world to save you and me to save you and me hallelujah and the question is how much do you love deeply the father God how much do you love deeply the father God just close your eyes in the presence of God and just think about I mean, how much we are loving our Father God. How much we are loving our Father God in our life. Hallelujah. How much we are deep in the love towards our Father God. Hallelujah. So let's all close our eyes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 So this morning we have been listening about our Father God. Hallelujah. And we became the sons of God. We became the children of God. Hallelujah. I mean we are the sons and daughters of God the Father and we are going to see that I mean that that, that Father in heaven. Hallelujah. And in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9 it says that there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. The rest in which all believers will enjoy with God. And even Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 it says that when there is a promise of eternal rest for those who die in Christ. Hallelujah. And we are going to enter into that perfect rest in heaven. The rest from our labors and rest from our battles. Hallelujah. There is no more pain. There is no more tears. There is no more battle. There is no more struggles in heaven. And we will be with the Father forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great privilege. I mean, I had to talk about many things about the, 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 the privileges of the adoption. And uh, I mean, I'll be, I mean, I mean, and there are there the privileges then i have no time to talk about all those but i mean for a, for a moment just, just uh, i mean give yours with the mighty hand of god hallelujah we have been listening listening about the father god hallelujah and we will be there in heaven one day and we will i mean leave all the struggles of this world and we will enjoy all the possessions and the hair okay they i mean sorgathrulla avagashangal okay through the sonship. Hallelujah. I mean, the question is, how much do you, I mean, love your father God, I mean, deeply. Hallelujah. You know, years ago, there was a, there was a, there was a girl, her name was Perpetua in North Africa, in North Africa. And this, I mean, girl, I mean, Perpetua, he decided to follow Jesus Christ and he, and she became a, child of God. She became a, 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 a Christian. And after becoming a Christian, the government and the people, those who were there, they arrested her and said, you are going to die in the cell. You are going to die in the cell. And while this perpetual was in the, in the cell, in the jail, you know, many people went there and they said, the families went there and said, no, you just reject, uh, I mean, just, I mean, uh, I mean refuse Jesus and, uh, I mean, uh, accept the, the other gods. The perpetual said, no, I cannot reject Jesus, my father God, who is in heaven. I believe in him and he is my father. Then again, 
his father, her father, Perpetua's father, physical father, he came there and he said, my daughter, remember, I am your father. Can you reject that Jesus and Heavenly Father and follow me? And can you and come with me? And if you are rejecting that Jesus and Father God, those people will be I mean, getting, I mean, giving you release. Okay? You will be out of the jail. But can you come with me now? I am the physical father for you. Can you come with me? And the perpetual said, perpetual said, you know, the answer was like this. You know, I love my heavenly father more than my father of this world. She was knowing that her father in this world can give her anything, whatever she asks. But she was knowing also that if she is not reaching to heaven, she is going to miss all the heavenly hers. All the heavenly possessions and positions in heaven. So that's the reason she said, no, I cannot leave my father God. I cling upon the promises of God and one day I will be there. They killed her and she was not afraid of the death in this world and she said, I am well confident that I will be in heaven, in heaven if you kill me. So let us think about ourselves and say, oh Lord, we love you Lord. Father, we deeply love you Father. Hallelujah. How many of you can pray that? Father God, we deeply love you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would request the, 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 the worship team to come forward here and they are going to sing one Malayalam song which is related to this and 